Hi everyone, welcome back to YouTube channel of Detox Technologies. My name is Harsh and today we are going to talk about AWS S3 buckets, misconfigured permissions abuse. So in simple words, we are going to talk about what if the AWS account administrator forgot to properly implement the permissions and the role matrix for the S3 bucket options. For example, assume a scenario where a company is hosting some of the employees personally identifiable information that you know as a PII information uh, on some AWS S3 bucket and that bucket is publicly accessible to any user. So any bad actor, any malicious hacker can simply go and access that bucket's endpoint and get hold of all the data of the employee's PII of that particular organization. So there have been a multiple instances where not only the read permissions were set uh, improperly, there, there has been like a lot of uh, things which happened with the AWS S3 buckets. Uh, the S3 takeover are the one thing, but here we are going to specifically talk about the misconfigured permissions abuse. In this particular video, we are assuming that the AWS S3 buckets are not takeover. Uh, the, the takeover is not an option for the particular buckets because we are talking that the buckets are properly set. The data is already there by the organization, but the access control rights are not properly implemented. So before getting started directly to that, let's just first talk about what are the S3 buckets and have a quick idea about it. So AWS S3 buckets are basically simple storage service which are used to store things like data, files, any, anything on the internet. It can be used to store and retrieve any amount of the data at any time from anywhere on the web. All you need to have access to the particular AWS console or the AWS CLI and you will be able to call the data at any time from anywhere. You can upload the data from any time anywhere. S3 stores the data as an object form within the bucket. So bucket is again a fancy name to uh, give it. Like bucket is simply a storage place. Like for your local system, you have hard drive to store something. Similarly for this, uh, this particular S3, it is stored the data as an object in some thing called buckets. So consider the bucket as the same hard drive, just the name is different. An object is a file or any kind of data and some optional metadata. Metadata is basically data about the data. So metadata describe that what the data is about. So for example, there's an HTML file and the meta tag might define that what the HTML file is all about. And so metadata basically describe that particular file only. AWS S3 buckets can allow multiple permission models based upon the access rights to the user. This is something that we will see in the very next slide. In simple terms, buckets are the containers for the object. As I've said earlier, that it's just a simple, like another fancy term, nothing else. You can read more about the AWS S3 bucket, how they work, how you can create your own S3 bucket at this particular link. These are the Amazon's official documentation, which are very neatly explaining the complete process for everything. AWS S3 implements a lot of security policies. Few of them are listed over here. The first thing is block public access. So as soon as you create a particular S3 bucket, the public access to that bucket is now disabled or blocked. Nobody can go and publicly access that. Since that is too much restrictive, sometimes the organization wants that the S3 bucket shall be accessible remotely for their own purposes or their own applications logic. Now what they do is basically they can go for the second option, maybe grant access with IAM identities. So IAM is basically nothing but identity and access management that what identity, identity as in like what user can access what thing. So uh, assume that there are multiple user levels, say admin user, moderator user, editor user, and the guest user. Now, so admin user say have access permissions or access to anything on that particular AWS instance. So basically he can go and uh, create new S3 bucket. He can destroy the S3 bucket, upload the data, and do anything. On the other hand, the moderator might have only limited permission. Say he can just only access the AWS S3 bucket and just write data, nothing yet. He cannot delete the data or he cannot modify the data, which is already present over there. The guest user on the other hand might not be able to perform any action such as creating data, deleting data or modifying data, but might be possible that a guest user can go and simply read that particular file. Now, there might be some bu bucket policies that a specific bucket, how it should be accessed to the user, which is not authenticated to the AWS or which is authenticated to the AWS. Further, based upon the users, you can define the policies, you can define the access control list that like we define in the web applications that a user say user admin has these many rights, user uh, guest has these many rights. Object encryption, again, to uh, have an added layer of security to your S3 bucket and the data that is being stored over here. 
logging and monitoring using the CloudWatch and other tools that AWS provide to see that how uh, the AWS S3 bucket is accessed, from where it is accessed, what kind of activity that has been uh, performed over your S3 bucket. So basically, this is an alerting uh, mechanism like CloudTrails, CloudWatch to ensure that the integrity of organization, even if hampered, you can go and detect it. You can go and read more about the AWS S3 security policies at the given URL at docs.amazonaws.com and simply say Amazon S3. And they, these are like very neatly explained uh, documentation. They explain each and everything very well. This uh, is a very good resource to you know, follow through. And if you want to learn the AWS security policies from the developer's perspective or want to dive deep into it, you can go and refer to the documentations. Now, before starting to abuse the misconfigured S3 bucket permissions, there are some requirements that we have to go and uh, fulfill. We will be using AWS CLI uh, to directly interact with the AWS console. So basically CLI is a command line version for the AWS console. You can interact with the uh, AWS console or the AWS interface directly via command line. So all you need to do is to uh, just simply go to the AWS documentation page and clone this particular uh, repo, simply say curl it. Then unzip this particular file and simply say sudo dot aws install. This one is particularly for the Linux operating systems. I have already like uh, installed it. Second thing is to configure aws cli. Once this particular thing is done, all you need to do is to say aws configure. It will ask for your the credentials and secrets, secret and access key. So you have to go to your Amazon's account in this under security se settings. You have to generate your uh, basically secret and the access key which you will be going and inputting in this AWS CLI. Once the AWS CLI is configured, now it's configured to access your account. Remember this thing that you are accessing basically your account. Now, why we are accessing our account is that sometimes the developer forget uh, to set the permission properly and they say that admin user of any authenticated AWS account can basically read, write, delete anything on the S3 bucket. Now, they are saying any AWS authenticated user. They are not saying the organization's authenticated AWS user. So I am also like having my own admin account. I am authenticated to the AWS. I fulfill and satisfy their requirements. Okay. And obviously it's, it's like uh, if I want to use AWS CI, I have to be authenticated again. So uh, let's uh, see that uh, what we basically require. So before diving directly into abusing misconfigured S3 bucket write permissions, I will show you that how you can first identify that if a web application is using uh, this AWS S3. And secondly, we will also see that uh, how we can abuse the read permissions. Okay, so let's go. I will quickly switch over to my SSH client over here, if you can see. Okay, perfect. Okay, so there is a website called flaws.cloud, which is basically intentionally developed to test the flaws of AWS only. So I will simply go and say dig, and simply I will give the domain name called flaws.cloud over here. I will take this particular IP, IP from here, copy it, and I will then say NS lookup, and then this. Now, if you will see the name, here is the S3 website, US West 2. This US West 2 is basically the region where the S3 bucket is being uh, hosted or being placed. Okay, so now this gives me a first idea that it is possible that my web application is using the AWS S3 bucket. Now, what I will do is basically I will use this particular command AWS, which is to run the AWS CLI. LS, as you usually do for listing a file in Linux or in uh, if you're using PowerShell, you can also use LS on the windows. Okay. So AWS LS, then I will say, I want to access the S3 service. Okay. AWS, sorry, uh, again, uh, AWS S3, then LS, and then S3 as the protocol, like you do HTTP, HTTPS. So what I will do is basically, I will write S3 as a protocol over here and the name of the bucket. Since we are not yet sure what is the name of bucket, but what I will basically do is since the flaws.cloud basically redirect me to s3 website us west 2amazonawscom I will use this first name only, this aws.cloud as a domain name over here and see if it basically uh, lists me some data. Now, see, from here, I can basically go and access this data using this AWS CLI. So this is the read permission abuse. Now, 
remember not all read permissions are basically a security issue because there might be a lot of static files there might be a lot of non sensitive information which might require to be loaded from s3 bucket for example some logos some CS, css files some javascript files so in those scenarios we don't consider them as a security issue but again if there is some sensitive file so for example here this thing says secret.html that might be something sensitive okay in this case this read permission is also a security issue so make sure that if you are reporting the read permission you are ensuring that what kind of data is visible to you do not go and blindly report that yeah there is a read permission the ls command is giving me something so it's for sure something uh, with flaw what if the bucket is properly configured i am just randomly converting it to flaws.2 and you will see uh, an error an error occur access denied when calling the list objects version 2 operation access denied so in this particular case it is possible that the uh, bucket is uh, properly configured and not allowing the read access as well okay so just uh, this is simple command to check if the read permissions are getting abused and the second thing to check over here specifically if any sensitive data is being uh leaked over here now uh, let's move back to the presentation and uh, where we were okay so we will now again get a look at the uh, abusing the misconfigured s3 bucket permissions write permissions so basically what we have to do is write permission means that you want to upload something on the s3 bucket which you can go and use for the uh, the abuse like say performing social engineering by hosting some malicious page which might cause phishing attacks you might uh, try to upload some malicious uh, file containing javascript payloads to execute in cross site scripting and depends that how the application is utilizing the bucket all you need to do is to basically go and say aws s3 and you want to access s3 service then you cp command to copy a file give the full file path say slash root slash hers and the file to copy then s3 as a protocol and the bucket name from uh, to where you want to upload the file okay upon success you should see something like upload uh, the file's name to this particular file now if you are seeing this message it means that you can upload anything on this particular s3 bucket and it is a high severity issue at least because uh, you can upload anything on the s3 bucket you can use it to perform the mischievous actions okay now similarly uh, if you are trying to abuse the uh, particular delete permissions so what you can do is basically uh, say aws s3 then say rm then say rm is basically to remove something and then again s3 is a protocol then bucket name and then slash whatever the file there is which you want to remove if you are able to remove the file successfully uh, again go and check the aws s3 ls the thing that we have seen initially in the first in the console as a live and see if the file is uh, exist existing or not if the file is not there it simply means that you are able to delete any file now if there is some sensitive files that you can delete or if there is some css file or some a uh, file which are basically powering up your application if you can delete those files it simply means that you can do anything any simple harm to the application and again it's a high severity issue but on the disclaimer make sure that on live website you are not testing delete permissions directly without the consent of the organization because you will end up in some trouble and uh, we are not responsible the only purpose of this video is to uh, highlight that what are the security issues with the access permission that you can do okay so basically uh, i cannot show the write permission in the remove permission on any publicly accessible s3 bucket to uh, not highlight their security issues but i have written a complete blog which you can go and check it out from here on the medium which basically explain the same steps which i have uh, showed in the video if if you want some written guide you can go and check this blog you can go to medium and search about this particular blog on the bug bounty write up so you can go to my profile in the medium and go and check it with that said this concludes our today's video once again thank you so much for watching this complete video and to the end if you have liked the video make sure to subscribe press the bell icon to stay updated with the notification we will make sure to come up with the new content uh, every week and maybe more frequent if you have any specific request for a particular content make sure to mention in the in the comment follow us on the twitter and stay updated stay secure thank you so much